Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti dot in. I am Nitin Gokhale. In today's special program, we are joined by a very special guest, Dr. J M Vyas, well-known forensic scientist, also a veteran in this field, working in this field for more than forty-eight years, and a Padma Shri Award winner uh, who heads the National Forensic uh, Sciences University based in Gandhi Nagar. a uh, specialist and a doyan of uh, this field uh, is uh, with us today and we are privileged dr ayas uh, that you. you gave us this opportunity to discuss uh, what is a very little known subject in the public so first up i want to uh, want you to tell uh, us and our viewers uh, why forensic is important uh, in the society as well as uh, for the government why is it important? there are two three reasons for this uh, that forensic has uh, become more important and also gaining more and more importance criminals have become more advanced they are using all kinds of sophisticated technologies now the old methods of conventional methods of committing crime are no longer used now sitting in one corner of the world you can commit offense in another country and then investigating this kind of cases with the criminal is another place and you are the victim is in a different part of the world now to find out this kind of perpetrator unless and until you have forensic support it will be very difficult so now you need science and technology based investigations and that is what forensic science is as a second uh, reason why it is becoming more important is criminals have also become smart they know what which are the evidences which may fix them <laughs> so after committing an offense they try to destroy the evidences right but according to us mm-hmm. forensically all evidences are present in minute quantities we call it traces okay they are always available in traces some traces available so somewhere so we'll take out the trace right and then examine and then fix him mm. say for example in one case i still remember right criminal after committing an offense was the hands went the entire floor and some oils with the blood was there in the palm mm. that also he went into wash basin and washed everything right from a small part of a wash basin we could take out a, a less of a drop of a blood mm-hmm. and we could identify the person so, so this is how is a forensic eye is important so this is what their tendency is they destroy the evidence thinking that they get escaped right and then uh the third reason what i see is now the statements of witnesses are no longer reliable i see okay. so because witnesses uh, can be manipulated can, can turn hostile can yeah. go hostile mm. lot of pressure on them right as a result they are not able to remain independent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it becomes difficult for courts many time to believe the, the witness mm-hmm. but the scientific evidence uh, is and being an objective evidence right plays a major role because evidence doesn't lie the exactly. witness can lie right this is what we say yes so in this circumstances forensic science is gaining more importance because the evidence produced or the opinion submitted by the forensic expert based on detailed analysis mm. with total justification plays a very important role in the courts to take a decision very well put i think so like you mentioned uh, modern uh, technology has also uh, made the criminal smarter or the criminal uh, much more um, sophisticated so has uh, forensic science also kept pace with the need of the time because if earlier you did something on say blood or uh, some flesh or somewhere something of that kind what about digital forensics for instance or cyber forensics yeah uh, how has that kept pace yeah that is what i told you sitting in one corner of the world you yeah. are able to commit offense in another country right so in that there is a digital crime mm-hmm. and these kind of digital crimes uh, you need lot of expertise mm-hmm. you need uh, a vast and cutting edge agen- agency uh, technologies right and using all this you need to with your level of expertise need to investigate such cases and i tell you we have been successful in handling large number of such investigations in a successful manner indeed in fact i was just looking at uh, some of the cases uh, that uh, the nfsu uh, has done so there is the nithari serial killings uh, there is also the arushi murder case which was very controversial godra train burning so uh, anything that you particularly uh, want to highlight about uh, recent cases where uh, there was a challenge but you still overcame that 
and the prosecution could get uh, help from uh, forensics. Something interesting. If I tell you a recent case of Delhi, right. the, the Khedu Tandor. Okay. A large number of people were involved. Mm-hmm. And if you see, based on CCTV images, mm-hmm. to segregate and identify who is a person who is doing this and who is not doing this, mm-hmm. huge task. Okay. I still remember more than 2,500 video clippings were available. Mm-hmm. Now to analyze them, identify the person who is there in the video clipping requires, we call it multimedia forensics. Mm-hmm. So using the expertise of multimedia forensics, everything was scrutinized. Okay. And then a detailed report given, was given to the Delhi police. Right. And we kept our people at different places in mm-hmm. uh, Delhi. So this is the Delhi, Delhi riot you are talking about? Right. Okay. So that's interesting, but uh, coming to the university itself, this has just been nominated about two years ago, I think, uh, as the uh, uh, national 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 importance or institution of national importance by an act of parliament. Um, how does that help uh, now for you to uh, spread your wings? Because I can see you have four campuses across the country. Do you have plans to uh, increase this uh, intake of people or campuses? And do you see interest amongst uh, young people in forensics? Uh, before giving this reply to your question, I would just like to give background of this. Right. Because in 2009, a Gujarat Forensic Science University was established. Correct. And that was the reason of the, and you the founder. Honorable Chief Minister and the present Honorable Prime Minister of India, right. Sri Narendra Modi. Mm-hmm. Now, this was his reason because... He was knowing that there is an acute shortage of such experts. Okay. And criminals are becoming more and more advanced. Okay. He was also thinking that there is a huge requirement of imparting training to experts, not only experts, even to the police officers who are into investigations, and also to judges who handle this kind of cases mm. where scientific evidence has been submitted. So looking to all this, he decided that we must have a university kind of mechanism. Right. Uh, fortunately, I was selected by him yeah. to head that university. Mm-hmm. And then he was also aware, very much aware that there is no such university anywhere in the world. Okay. And then mm-hmm. he told me very clearly that this university is nowhere available in the world, mm-hmm. but then we have to take lead. Right. I know you will not get any reference mm-hmm. that you pick up a model of New York Forensic University yeah. or yeah. a London Forensic University and duplicate it here. Right. That was not the case here. Right. So what we did was our own design, our own concept, our right. own vision. We started establishing it, went on, went on. And if we could see within a few years, tremendous amount of potential. Mm-hmm. That not only in India, Large number of countries are depending on forensic capabilities. Some of the countries, I don't want to name, but they don't have forensic facilities at all. I see. And then I was asking them as to how do you decide the case? Yes. They said it is based on witness. Oh. If the witness says mm. that, yes, I saw this person committing a murder or a rape, mm. and he goes to the court and says, mm. court agrees. Mm. But if the witness turns hostile, right. and if there's no witness available, mm. No decision. no decision. This is how the is so still it, it weakens the case. Yeah. So yeah. these kind of yeah. countries, they are very much interested in establishing forensic capabilities. Right. In some of the countries, they do have, but not up to the mark. Right. So they want to strengthen this. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was a tremendous demand. Mm. Establishment of as we also started. Uh, Offering courses and consultancy. So yeah. academics, yeah. we enter into academics. Mm-hmm. That was the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then looking to huge demand of training, mm-hmm. we went for training, mm-hmm. and then we also started giving consultancy to various countries. So this is a different kind of university. Right. We are into academics, training, research, and consultancy. And you've done it for uh, more than uh, some fifty countries, apparently. Consultancy. Uh... Consultancy, yeah, and we could provide training to law enforcement agency officers of around seventy to seventy-two countries. There you are. So, so uh, you obviously strengthened their hands. We have strengthened uh, their, their hands. hands. But uh, when did it become? Uh, it became in October twenty twenty. This uh, institution so, of national so, importance. So looking to its import, and then we were limited to Gujarat State Forensic University. Right. Though we were expanding our uh, scope, etc. Yeah. But then the Honorable PM then thought that if suppose this wants to, to reach out to the entire globe in a more smooth manner, yes. 
they this need to be converted and given a, a, a status of national history of national importance right. and need to be upgraded national forensic university yes. so this was done in october 2020 right. now it has become easy for us to approach any country mm-hmm. and then we we also have given one campus in delhi right yes we just heard so that so through yeah. this campus mm. now people can anywhere in the world can contact delhi is easy to go come to delhi and go back right so that kind of ease has been created and uh, more demand now after becoming national mm. not only in india we have established three campuses right. rightly said mm. there also a demand our expert is sitting in dubai today okay so we are uh, working out a module for nice. the for you in this mm. already received a proposal from uganda and many countries i'm sure so at mm-hmm. least five six countries have already submitted their proposals which is under examination excellent so this is also affiliated to the ministry of home affairs this we are part of mha mha of so coming to the uh, this is the hardware i mean you have the campuses you have the you know intention what about the software what about the faculty what about people who can train other people and how do you get uh, the uh, people to get interested in forensics if you can elaborate on that yeah you are right because when there was no awareness there were no experts available that is how we decided to establish the university so that we can create experts <laughs> so it was difficult to get good faculty who could teach our students right so initially i was dependent on faculty from us mm-hmm. we used to get faculty from israel faculty used to come from australia mm-hmm. and countries like this and then slowly 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 we started training our own faculty and mm-hmm. now we have become masters we are helping other countries <laughs> okay what about students is there interest amongst uh, young people you to come into interest. forensics in fact we don't is is not that easy to get admissions in mm-hmm. the university mm-hmm. against uh, say for example our main program forensic science masters mm-hmm. program right we have kept 120 seats okay. against which we get thousands of applications okay. so we have got own screening tests mm-hmm. what are the other courses that you offer apart initially from initially we started because yeah that also is a good thing when we started university people were la- laughing because only one program bsc forensic science and msc forensic science Correct. how can you have a university for one course mm-hmm. but then we started with five programs today we have around 70 programs in different see. specialized area right. of forensics oh that's that's very good to know uh, so uh, going forward my final question to you uh, you have uh, plans of opening some 20 training centers and 10 campuses uh, what is your uh, horizon what is the timeline that you are looking at see within one year as you know we could establish four campuses uh, yeah. within the university mm-hmm. and maybe in coming 2 to 3 years we will have at least a large number of training centers through which we can provide uh, training facilities to the nearby uh, states uh, neighboring states etc mm-hmm. so that it becomes easy for them to approach that center and uh, get their people trained uh, so to create this facility is for Uh, providing more facilities to the law enforcement and stakeholders basically exactly so basically forensic science uh, unlike what we see in movies or used to see in the movies is got a much vast uh, expanse and uh, much uh, more subtlety uh, to it or much more nuance to it Gee. than what you really see and Gee. you see that uh, as uh, the modern criminal becomes more and more sophisticated you have to also keep pace with that so uh, yeah and one more additional point i would like to say is mm. we have more number of girl students than boy students in the courses, uh, in the courses to do all this course. that's wonderful to know dr vyas thank you very much for your time and giving us this wonderful insight into very little known uh, subject or uh, topic uh, in uh, criminology or in uh, in the in the crime scene thank you very much thank for you. your time thank you so much thank you thank you